If you've decided to become an actuary, then you might think that taking an actuarial exam is the first step that you should take on your actuarial journey, but that is actually not the best or the fastest approach to achieve this goal. You're going to learn why that's the case in this video, plus you'll learn when you actually should take your first actuarial exam. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates so that they can get their actuarial dream job as quickly as possible. So let's get in this video. Three, two, one. Go. If you've been feeling sort of lost on your actuarial journey and how to actually get started, I completely understand that. I was in your exact same situation many years ago, and I know it's difficult to find reliable people that you can ask questions to and get reliable advice from. You can go to your school counselor at school, but a lot of the time they're not extremely familiar with the actuarial career overall, so it can be hard to get reliable advice there. And if you go ask friends and maybe some other people that have considered or maybe started to pursue the actuarial career, even then it can be difficult to know whether this information you're getting is extremely reliable. So I'm hoping in this video I can help out with that. Okay, so for most people, all you really hear about are actuarial exams. Everyone talks about how you have to pass actuarial exams, how they're so important, and that is absolutely true. You are going to need to pass actuarial exams, but sometimes I think that people forget about the real foundational pieces of becoming an actuary that you need to do even before you start studying for your exam. Now, I like to think of this like baking a cake. So when you go to a cake and if you want to do it as quickly as possible, you're most likely not going to start by making the icing. Yes, the icing is what most people will see and comment on. It kind of makes the cake look really special and what makes it stand out. But if you start with the icing, then you're not going to get this cake done as quickly as possible. What would make more sense is to actually start by mixing the ingredients for the cake itself and then put the cake ingredients into the oven. And while the cake is in the oven baking for maybe 40 minutes, that's when you can make the icing because that means you can be getting two things done at the same time and that's going to mean you're doing things the most efficient way possible. So your actuarial journey is very similar to this. If you start by taking an exam, which is kind of like the icing on the cake, you're doing the things that most people are going to really recognize and ask you about. But by starting with an exam, you're doing things inefficiently because there are other things you can be doing that are just as important that can be done at the same time. And if you start those things ahead of time before you start studying for your exam, just like if you do the cake before you start the icing, well, then it's going to allow you to complete your actuarial journey and get your first actuarial job as quickly as possible. So that's why I recommend that you do not start your actuarial journey by taking an exam. Here's what to do instead. Now, first, you're going to learn Microsoft Excel. For those of you that don't know, Microsoft Excel is something that you're probably going to use in every actuarial position that you ever work in. Whether it be an actuarial internship or a full-time job, you're probably going to be using Microsoft Excel. It's so important for you to know it inside and out so you have to become an Excel master. Now, a lot of actuarial employers are going to be looking for these skills when they go to hire you or other candidates for the positions that they're hiring for. If you learn Microsoft Excel first, then you're going to start looking for a stepping stone position. And if you haven't heard me talk about stepping stone positions before, basically that's a position that's going to give you relevant experience for your actuarial career. Most actuarial employers aren't going to want to hire someone that has no related experience in the workforce. So if you can work in a position that's going to allow you to develop some skills and knowledge and some experience that is going to help you succeed in an actuarial role, that's going to be really beneficial for you. Now, even better is if you can start using your Microsoft Excel skills in that stepping stone position. That's going to help prove to employers that you know how to use Excel and that you've also used it in the real world. And that is a great way to stand out. So I worked in my dad's business in the admin area and also in the bookkeeping area. So I I had a lot of exposure to financial statements. I was responsible for doing invoicing and paying bills, paying taxes, all that sort of stuff. And that was a great way for me to get some related experience that would be helpful in an actuarial role. I also worked in a position where I was responsible for keeping a database up to date. So I worked for a company that had tons and tons of assets like um, computers, they had laptops, they had cell phones, they had servers, all this sort of stuff. And they had seven branches all across Canada. And 
thousands of employees. So my responsibility was to make sure that our database was up to date so we knew exactly which employee had which pieces of equipment. And that was really important for the company because we want to make sure, first of all, that people weren't stealing equipment, but also so that we knew where things were when we needed them. Sometimes certain assets would have to go back for lease and we'd get new assets. So we'd have to know which employees had those assets so that we could collect them, return them to the leasing company and get new assets to return to the employee. So this is my job for about four months and that experience alone really helped in getting an actuarial job as well. Both of these would be considered stepping stone positions because they helped me gain relevant experience that was beneficial in my actuarial career. And again, a stepping stone position like these or something similar will help you not only in getting an actuarial job, your first full-time job, but also an internship if that's what you're looking for. So essentially before you take or start studying for your first actuarial exam, you want to learn Microsoft Excel and then go find yourself a stepping stone position so that you can start studying for your actuarial exam at the same time as you're working in your stepping stone position. That means that you're going to maybe gain about six to 12 months of experience in your stepping stone position at the same time as you are working on passing actuarial exams. And that's gonna save you a ton of time. Okay, so you probably fall into one of two categories right now. Either you are a student that is currently wanting to take actuarial exams so that you can get an internship. And if that is the case, then I would highly recommend that you wait to take your first exam until you have taken some calculus courses and maybe even a course in financial mathematics. So learning about interest and bonds and stocks and things like that. The first two actuarial exams are really heavily focused on calculus concepts and on financial mathematics. So if you have background in either of those, it's going to help you get through your actuarial exam studying quicker. Now, if you're someone that's not in school, you're probably going to want to learn calculus before you even start studying for your first actuarial exam because there is quite a bit of calculus, especially on exam P. That'll help you have a good foundation for your actuarial studying before you actually get started on the exam studying. Okay, so now if this video has been helpful for you so far, could you please give it a thumbs up to let me know and also so that it can spread to more future actuaries that really, really, really need this information about actuarial exams. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now, I know it can be sort of hard to juggle all of this. I'm right now asking you not only to go learn Excel, but also to start working in a stepping stone position at the same time as you are studying for an actuarial exam. And for many of you, you're probably also going to be in school. So you're trying to do all of this stuff at once. I really, really, really want to encourage you to take time for yourself. Your mental health is so, so, so much more important than trying to achieve your actuarial goals as quickly as possible. When I was in your shoes working, studying for actuarial exams, in school, studying for exams there, it was really difficult for me to keep everything together. It was so stressful. And I remember there were days when I just started to dread my actuarial journey. I felt like I didn't want to do it anymore. And that is because I didn't leave enough time for doing things for myself. I also tended to underestimate the amount of time it would take me to complete different things that needed to get done. And it just caused so much stress in my life. So I have learned from that now. And I hope that you will also make sure that you are taking time for yourself, making sure you're setting realistic goals. Because again, your mental health is so much more important than achieving your actuarial goals as quickly as possible. Even if it means taking an extra couple of months to achieve this goal, it is totally worth it to keep your mental health in check. Okay, now if you're wondering which exam you should take first, then you're going to want to start with exam P or exam FM if you are planning to work in Canada or the US. If you're outside of those two countries, I'm really not 100% sure which exams you would take. But for Canada and the US, you're going to want to take exam P or exam FM first. Now exam P, the P stands for probability and for exam FM, the FM stands for financial mathematics. If you have a background already in calculus, then you might want to start with the exam P. If you already have background knowledge on interest and bonds and stocks and that sort of thing, different assets, investment options, then you might want to start with exam FM. It really doesn't matter which one you take first. Either one is totally fine and you'll have to take them both anyways. Now for most people, they do find exam FM to be the easier of the two. So if you're looking to get the easier one out of the way, you would want to start with exam FM probably. But sometimes future actuaries want to get the more difficult exam out of the way, which is exam P. So you would want to start with that one. It really doesn't matter though. Okay, now if you are not really 100% sure how actuarial exams work, then you have to go watch this video to get all the details about how those exams work. And that is all for today. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.